but is that um, Tres Bien, one of my favorite stores, one of my favorite online stores, let's say for streetwear and fashion, has opened a store in London, right? That's pretty cool. Um, maybe not the best timing in the world, I'm sure. Well, I don't know really, you know, a lot of those streetwear kids, like the part, the, the buying, the consumerism must go on for some of those kids, right? So I'm sure they're going to be lining up outside that store and buying whatever they can. But again, um, London's had a very tumultuous relationship when it comes to menswear clothing stores or just clothing stores in general, especially like streetwear type places. Um, ever since the demise of Hideout, uh, the Bape store, um, maybe even Slamming Kicks, you can include in that. Uh, who else the other store that was around a few others isn't it I can't remember the others but it feels as if like there's been a real gap in the market that kind of caters to the kind of streetwear audience of course the street market Selfridges uh, Browns End Clothing uh, Hostem um, Good Hood have done a good job to kind of um, uh, fill in that gap but there's still there still feels that there's a little bit of a gap that kind of for the store that can replicate the feel of what Hideout was right this whole like much more of a streetwear aesthetic with a sprinkling of some luxury fashion brands. No, there wasn't a luxury fashion brands. It was predominantly streetwear and just Japanese brands, right? Which essentially isn't what streetwear is now. Streetwear now is the mix of, you know, Balenciaga triple S's and some, you know, some Ramiri jeans, I'd assume, right? That kind of like mix of like that and maybe, uh, let's say a Palace sweatshirt or some shit, right? Even though you, I would say fuck Palace, but just in general, I'd say those are kind of a good example. The mix of like high, mid and low. So, and maybe like a you know um uh brain dead snapback hat or something so there is a kind of gap for that kind of stuff and maybe tresbian would be the best example for it because you know you, you just go on their website now and they have probably one of the most eclectic you know lists of brands i think for an online store and i just in general love their approach to buying i think it's very uh tastefully done it's obviously them just kind of scratching their own itch and buying stuff they're legitimately interested in themselves, which I think is always kind of, you always get to see, I think you always get feel of that once you're on online stores about the buying, uh, that, or the buying team's direction for what they want in a season. You can kind of see if somebody's really into the stuff that they're buying for the sake of it, for, for what they want, or if it's something that they're buying just because, you know, it's a trendy thing available now. But if you go online, you see it now, right? It's a new items on Tresby. Just have a quick scan through. You can definitely see there's a lot of kind of like, you know, um, stuff just bought for the sake of it for them, like stuff that they're interested in, right? You've got some great Nike shoes here. Some again, I'm not just sure what the plus is on what to buy when you're buying from Nike. I'm not sure if it's like if you get the limited edition stuff, you have to take some shitty stuff. But I think some brands are afforded the luxury of being able to choose from a line sheet what they want. So you know, you've got like you know these Raph Sim and Dr. Martin, some New Balances, some um, Nike ISPA. Um, Air Max 720s that are not the pop most popular shoe in the world, but again, maybe it fits their aesthetic. You've got, of course, some great brain dead uh, clothing. You've got Gimme 5 stuff in there, which again is something that only the heads will be appreciated of, and it's not something the kids that will be too down on. And some great books. Um, again, like look at this, like a nice model of the what's that? Uh, Adidas Hamburg in that kind of blue suede colorway. It's really nice. So a really clever and a very purposefully and kind of meticulous uh buying processes made um Trez being probably one of the standout online stores i think for menswear or streetwear in general right just very cleverly done of course they've got their own inline brand stuff that they do as well that's very very nice i'm a big fan of too um of course loads of nice sweatshirts here loads of nice pants and just very artistically and creatively done so they've got a new store up in london it looks very beautiful um it's somewhere where is it actually located, the address here? It's uh, in Soho, actually, which I think a lot of stores are there. I'm assuming there's loads of, like, free units or uh, there's loads of available units you can kind of t take advantage of. And um, from the outside, you've got this sort of, like, um, navy blue uh, color um, on the outside decor, uh, stark white interior, uh, minimal shelving, minimal rails, some nice bits and pieces here just very kind of minimally done again very tasteful i'm interested to see how they're going to merchandise it once it's fully opened um that'll be something to check out um, once that is happening but here it is here from uh, tresbian uh article from hypebeast says they open a new flagship store um so here's the following 
Um, after is, is it on the screen too? you see it yeah, so after announcing plans for its international expansion late last year Colt Malmo retailer Tresbian has now officially opened the doors to its new location in London taking over the space in Soho the store designed alongside design studio MP12 a long time collaborator will feature a multi-brand selection alongside mainline Tresbian pieces which is going to be sick so it's going to be there you know a chance for them to kind of which is great I think for online stores nowadays right they have an opportunity I think since Essence do it too with their essentials um main line if you have a banging online store you are able to kind of make your own you're able if you have a banging online store mostly people are going to be um drawn to your store because they trust your brand right they believe in your uh the brands that you kind of bring in they believe in your taste level in general that's the most important thing so with that you should be able to make some halfway decent merch some halfway decent pieces or you can maybe collaborate with different brands that you have inside your store to kind of you know continue that a great collaborative story and then what you also got the opportunity to do is that once you've expanded to a level where you've kind of, you know, generated enough income and maybe profit or sales, whatever it may be, you can then expand globally, maybe locally uh, into retail stores. And you also have the ability to kind of put your own garments alongside the garments that you're stocking online, in your online store. And I guess there's something a little bit more tactile about seeing a Tresbian sweatshirt alongside something from, you know, Isi Miyake, for instance, right? It kind of gives the brand, it kind of gives a brand or what you're doing a little bit more context. People kind of understand where you're coming from, right? You can kind of see the codes that you're using or the inspiration that you're taking from it. And just in general, it's nice to sit alongside brands that you're kind of aspiring to get to. And it also allows people who don't know your brand to kind of wander in, right? Some, you know, some passerby to kind of pop in, one, see a really cool hat by Margaret Howe or whatever, and then decide, you know what, I might buy your sweatshirt too. And that sale would have never happened if you didn't have a retail store where you could essentially put your brand alongside the high-end brand. So it's a really clever way to kind of um, introduce your brand to a market that's already ready for it. And again, to quickly see market research if people like it or not, and then double, and then kind of, you know, um, double up the production. If they don't, you just kind of go back to the drawing board. Anyway, this article continues here. Officially opening the store, creative director Hans um, Hogman um, explain to Hypebeast that London is a city in Europe where we feel most at home, a city where we find a lot of inspiration, popular, popular culture, subcultures, music people. Uh, we feel very much at home here. The location is perfect, right in the middle of everything, but just a little bit out on the side, so you kind of have to know where you're going. The sign is in the inside of the store, so you don't really see it if you're not looking for it. The same approach we've always had to Tresbian. We want the customer to come to us when we when, when they want to. Screaming too loud is not really in our part of the DNA, which is definitely something I ascribe to. I definitely like. I think you see a lot of that in the cult, you know, Japanese or Tokyo-based brands that people know and love. Somehow, you know, you walk past the store seven times without realizing it's there. It's down a stairway. They kind of just do stuff in a very slow, methodical way, their own way. Uh, they have a cult following. Uh, a lower base of customers and if you get it you get it if you don't you don't but they do what they do regardless of what's going on on the outside and i think that's definitely something a, a strength of trends being what they're doing but i'm also interested i think the location of opening it in london is also very interesting because i think there is a lot of synergy when it comes to stylistic choices in clothing right in taste level as well uh between scandinavian countries and i'd say for the uk in general uh, there's a lot of um there's a lot of uh overlap there's a lot of uh, similarities in how we approach the stuff that we buying into um, for instance I, I look at kind of the football culture thing right the terrorist culture clothing that's something that you see a lot of Scandinavian kids are wearing even if they don't watch football because it just looks cool right Stone Island uh, Wrang not Wranglers what, what jeans do they wear I forgot their jeans but um, you know Adidas G Adidas trainers Stone Island CP company uh, Kaggles rain jackets anoraks um, Arteryx, loads of that kind of stuff that people would wear on these terraces are now being, you know, uh, co-opted by kids, you know, in Malmo and whatever, and other far-flung places. So it's really interesting. It's a very clever idea to open a store in London in general. Um, oh, Hogman also went on to explain that the importance of being a Soho, particularly referencing the area's influence on him. So it's definitely a dream come true to be part of one of the f uh, finest retail destinations in the world with so much history and culture. One of my first Soho memories is entering the hideout. Yeah, there we go. For the very first time on a sunny day in April. And I still have the same feeling when I come back to Soho. It's very much the same here. Mm, I wouldn't say that. It's weird, isn't it? 
foreigners always have this reverence with London and Soho, but Soho has been dead for a while, man. It's been fucking dead out here. So a lot of the kids that I see nowadays who are really smashing on Instagram and shit, most of the time they're, you know, most of the time they get seeded things and they get sent it. But a lot of it's buying stuff online and on sales, right? There's a lot. I forgot who the Asian kid is who's buying, who's always buying fucking Saint Laurent boots. But most of the stuff that he buys is on online stores. He rarely, if ever, goes to real shops to go buy stuff. And if he does, it's vintage shops and thrift and thrift. Uh, vintage and thrift stores right or second hand stores so i think the retail scene in london for the most part has been quite shit which is why um Trans Bay has the opportunity to come in and open their store i'd imagine if, if if the retail scene in london were thriving those kind of spaces wouldn't exist for them to kind of move into so i think it's an ample opportunity for them to do it but i also think they shouldn't be too optimistic about the level of i don't know vibes that, again different now because if you don't live in london and you pop in here right and, you're, and you come to london i don't know four times a year and you get and you just see all these new kids popping out and they all look cool and shit and the scene's thriving it could look one way and i guess when you're an industry professional it definitely has a different tinge a different glow to it because everyone's sucking your dick and everyone wants you to be part of it everyone wants you to carry their brand they want to go to they want to you know have an activation in your store they want you to co-sign them give them an intro they want you to kind of let them in on the showroom goss i don't know right i get that but i guess as a consumer i would say personally i think the london retail scene especially streetwear or menswear fashion stuff is kind of a shit if you guys think differently definitely leave me a comment below and let me know but I, I don't know man like i think that hideout era was one of the best times ever nowadays i don't know it's a bit crappy isn't it really isn't it like even slam city skates isn't what it used to be and that was like you know one of the best places i like to go to even though i used to get vibed out there all the time i used to love shopping in sam city skates but i don't know maybe it's just me um but anyway that, that that aside great store glad it's open welcome edition i think um it should hopefully spark a little i think it's good for competition too right for the other retail stores to keep everyone on their toes right because you know it, i think for the most part dover street market and good have kind of had free reign and been leading the charge in terms of styling aesthetic and buying decisions all that malarkey but it'll be cool to have stress being on board they're going to have probably some activations there some you know gallery stuff some book launches that would be cool to see all the cool kids in london coming out again and getting their free beers of you know um red stripe or carlsberg whatever the promote whoever the the brand sponsor is nowadays that would be quite cool to see that energy returning again and just general just kind of get a bit of a, a vibe and a destination to go to because i think that's what's lacking um nowadays but yeah um definitely check it out um tresby in london it's on 23 meard street soho london w1f zero e y check those guys out say hi buy some stuff uh, buy some books, buy some clothes, whatever you can. They've got a good selection of shit in there anyway. I'm a big fan of the store. I've been shopping on their online stuff from the very, very beginning. Back when they used to have that amazing blog where they used to post all the behind the scenes stuff uh, from showrooms and stuff. That used to be really, really fucking cool. They don't do it too often now, I don't think, do they? Let's see. Do they still have that blog? That blog was so good. So yeah, they have a blog. They used to have a little Tumblr where they show you all the showroom stuff, stuff that they've been looking at when they when they go around and stuff. That would be really cool. So definitely check it out. Um, really cool. Oh, they had the opening party too. Who DJ there? Colonel Kovacs. Whoa, fucking hell. That was sick, isn't it? Nice one. So definitely check it out. Big fan of it. Um, loads of cool stuff to check out. Tresbia, the fucking bosses.